Um, Clara, please please allow them in, in as I share the screen, please. Thank you. Yes, I said thank you. Okay, all right.
allocate button. Um, I, I, I. Was oh. I, am I uh, accidentally out of the, out of the webinar? Yes, you. Okay. Yeah. Would you like me to, I need to sign in again, right? No, 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 you are in already, so. Oh, can, okay. Yeah. Okay, I, I just don't, I can't see anybody or hear anybody, that's the thing. Oh, because they, everybody's muted and we are waiting for you to stop. Oh, I think Dr. Kaguli Malawadi is starting. Oh, okay. I can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Good. I think Dr. Kuguli Malawadi is is starting and doing the introductions, and I'll be doing the questions and answers with Dr. Kuguli Malawadi. Hey, Keith. Hi, Andrew. Andrew here. Hey, um, <clears throat> I'm wondering if uh, Elsie fell off the call. I'm actually not seeing her. Neither am I. And I think the gentleman who is our host, uh, sorry, who is our is our host uh, speaking? Sorry, Andrew. I think are you still on. I don't know your name. I'm sorry. Roger. Uh, Roger, can you hear yes, me, Roger? I can hear you. Um, we are trying to get uh, the Dr. Elsie Dr. Kigoli to get on board, uh, but while waiting. I would like to just play the, the video for just a minute while sure. she's joining. Okay. Right. Yeah. And I don't know if Dr. Omaswa also has the link too. Hi, everybody. Uh, Keith Martin, I'm the Executive Director of the Consortium of Universities for Global Health. Welcome to this uh, important uh, AfroHealth-led uh, webinar. Uh, Dr. Elsie Kaguli Malawadi, we're just having a little bit of technical difficulties um, uh, getting her online, and, and she's, she apologizes. We'll get to the webinar shortly. If you are on and uh, you have a, a mute button, please mute it. If you are, and then we'll be starting shortly once uh, Dr. Kaguli Malawadi and uh, Professor Omaswa get online. And we look forward to speaking with you very shortly, but we'll keep you updated. Thanks so much.
Uh, Francis Omaswa is online. Wonderful. Professor Omaswa, welcome. We've got yourself, you. uh, Dr. Dykins, uh, Dr. Elsie Kaguli Malawadi uh, is uh, just waiting. Roger, I think we'd, we're about to get her on very shortly. Maybe what we'll do um, with everybody's permission, since we could have over 50 people online right now, is I'll just do a very short introduction before handing it over to Dr. Kaguli Malawadi. And we'll just start with uh, basically a little overview of what this webinar is about, how it came about, and what the other two get involved. And I wonder, uh, Professor Maswa and Dr. Dykins, if you could turn your cameras on, please. And then I'll hand it over to Professor Maswa, if you would be so kind. Uh, we're honored to have you here uh, as one of the founders of Afro Health. Uh, and a giant on the continent of Africa and around the world uh, in medicine and uh, in research and so many other things. So, Professor Maso, please, if you could introduce yourself, that would be wonderful. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, uh, all, all of you. Uh, it's nice to be able to uh, link up with such a global audience. I am uh, Francis Omaswa. I, it's uh, historical, retired from several positions. My last official job was at WHO headquarters as executive director of the Global Health Workforce Alliance. And uh, before that, I was the director general in the Ministry of Health in Uganda. And uh, after those uh, jobs and others before that, I retired and set up the African Center for Global Health and Social Transformation just to uh, now my employers, uh, together also with uh, uh, Dr. Elsie Chiguli Marwade, whom we are waiting for. So I think that could do for an introduction now. Thank you very much, Professor Masu. I may add on a personal note, you have been a guide of mine for probably now we're dating ourselves for more than two decades when I was a member of parliament. I came to see you to seek your guidance. Yeah. So you were very yeah. kind when you were the WHO in Geneva to make time for me, which I was immensely grateful. Nice. We maintained that friendship for so long. So it's so wonderful to see you. Thank you. And then to another great friend and a leader within the Consortium of Universities for Global Health, uh, and Dr. Andrew Dykins. Andrew, please, over to you. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, good day to everyone. Uh, it is truly an honor to be with you today. Um, and uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, my name is Andrew. Uh, I'm at the University of Illinois, Chicago uh, in the Department of Family and Community Medicine and at the Center for Global Health. Um, and through the Consortium of Universities for Global Health and um, collaborating with uh, many other colleagues there to advance an initiative uh, termed the uh, Capacity Strengthening Platform, which will be um, talking about today. So it is very much an honor to be with you and I'm very much looking forward to the conversation today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Andrew. And just a small aside, uh, for those of you, Dr. Dykins does very important work. His primary care doc does extremely important work with colleagues in Senegal and including on cervical cancer elimination. And we know cervical cancer, entirely preventable, kills more than 300,000 women a year. Um, I don't know, Roger, if uh, Dr. Kaguli Malawadi is on yet. Uh, when she is, please uh, let us know, and I will hand it over to her. But uh, just as a little, until until that time, uh, a little bit of a backstory. This uh, webinar is really going to the heart of a, of a singular challenge that everybody online knows, which is the incredibly large and growing deficit in skilled healthcare workers. And what uh, AfroHealth has done and led and in, in collaboration with us at the Consortium of Universities for Global Health. And we are a consortium like AfroHealth. Uh, we have over 170 academic institutions around the world and a network of 38,000 practitioners. We work across research, education, service, and advocacy. And our mission is to improve the well being of people and the health of the planet. Um, and so, but what we have done with our colleagues in AfroHealth and Afro has led uh, is how do we deal with the human resources deficit? So what we're going to do today is listen to our esteemed panelists. Professor Masawa will go first, followed by uh, Dr. Dykins, uh, and then when Dr. Kaguli Malawadi comes on, she will take over. 
but I just uh, like to start with uh, Professor Maswa, who's going to give us a short uh, a presentation on the human resources deficit. And then Dr. Dykins is going to uh, be taking over to showcase a collaboration and a platform and a mechanism that AfroHealth and CUGH have worked on for some time to be able to address the health human resources deficits on the continent led by African institutions for African countries, for African people, by uh, African leaders. So I will hand it over, Professor Moswood, to you, please, and thank you again. Okay, I, I have some slides, and I don't know if there is a facility to share the screen, but if not, I can just speak. Uh, I have uh, on the program 10 minutes, I'll try and stick to that. And uh, 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 sorry, Professor Moss, if I may interrupt you, if you have slides, if you, I don't know, Roger, can you uh, put uh, Dr. Professor Moswa's slides on, please? And and then Professor Moswa will guide you in terms of advancing that. Is that all right, Professor Moswa? Yeah, if uh, uh, this, this screen can allow uh, uh, sharing. Okay. Well, let, let, me, let me try and get a slide on board now. Let's... Okay. Thank, thank you, Roger. And then, um, and then Professor Maswa, uh, uh, we'll all have the benefit of seeing your slides, which will be yeah. great. Yeah. Well, the, the real messages are a, a few, maybe three or so. The first one is we ask ourselves, why is this important? The answer is that we would like the people of the world, including those in Africa, to be able to enjoy the highest possible standards of life. Right now in many African communities, a woman dies in childbirth, a child dies in malaria, and we are so used to it, we just shrug it off and say, ah, it was a hard day to die, a child has been called by God, and, and we want to stop that because those deaths are preventable. That is why this is important. We also would like to create a climate of opinion, which actually will make this possible at global level and at country level and at community level. Africa has done reasonably well following the uh, MDGs and now SDGs, many improvements during S uh, MDGs, but still the gap between the situation in Africa, like in child mortality, and other regions of the world is still too big. And we really want to get on top of this. We must address this problem. That is why this is important. And that's why it is great to be able to partner uh, uh, between uh, AfriHealth and CUGH to mobilize that global climate of opinion that will make it possible for every person in every village to have access to a, qualified, a competent, skilled, and supported health worker. And these are mainly educational institutions, and education is key. It is the lack of education that is a major cause of the global shortage of health workers, described as the global health workforce force crisis characterized by widespread shortages, maldistribution, and poor working conditions. And if we were able to educate a sufficient number and share them through uh, mechanisms that we have developed as the global community, uh, for example, the WHO code on the international recruitment of health personnel, we would then have a real op a possibility of achieving that vision of uh, uh, making it possible for every person in every village to get access to a health worker. And we are also talking at the same time about strengthening health systems, because the best education is one which is undertaken where in real life situations where graduates come out and are able to go and work using the infrastructure and the facilities uh, uh, similar to those where they were trained. 
So uh, linking the education system and strengthening the health system is part and parcel of this. And we look at the health workforce in a comprehensive way, uh, all the way from community health workers uh, among communities to special super specialists, uh, such as those uh, who do brain surgery, heart surgery, etc. And we would like to impart uh, competencies through this education system. And some of the key competencies I have on my list here is that the, the graduates should be prepared to work where their services are most required. They should be able to respond to the health needs of the communities which they have been able to, uh, to acquire uh, through uh, the health system where they were trained. And they should be able to provide quality care using the available resources in their health system. And their training also should ensure that these competencies which they acquire can be applied within the environment in which they are practicing. Whether you have MRIs or you don't have MRIs, it should still be possible for a graduate to be able to make a diagnosis and provide treatment or make interventions in public health which prevent uh, disease and promote health. And also we want these people to be leaders, change agents in their communities. They we want them to be uh, self-directed uh, learners for the rest of their lives and also effective communicators as leaders. So those are some of the attributes we would like to see uh, among these uh, uh, graduates. Now, how do we achieve this? In my days uh, at the Global Health Workforce Alliance, we undertook a number of studies as to how we might be able to do this. And uh, one of the, the task forces listed the following uh, critical success factors. Number one in their list is political commitment and good governance. And the Global Health Workforce uh, 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 Alliance convened the first global forum on human resources for health. It actually took place here in Kampala and uh, I was the convener. The, the first uh, uh, um, item of the six recommendations from that forum was the question of building capacity for leadership and governance of health workforce. That is the challenge in many countries today with governance. And then the other one is the uh, ability to generate data and information uh, for, for uh, improving governance of health workers. Uh, and, and lastly, uh, 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 we want to see good quality health workforce planning in the countries, in the regions. You plan long term, uh, act short, and review. Uh, as we go forward. Um, we also uh, want to uh, ensure that they, we have a quality assurance in this training through strong regulatory bodies in the countries and in the regions, strict uh, 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 and independent accreditation of the training institutions. We also want uh, the training institutions to have a close relationship with professional associations, such as, I don't know, the Association of Pediatricians or Obstetricians, and so on, in order to ensure that uh, the values and ethics are, 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 uh, are imparted on this, not only the students, but also in the health system. And we want to be able to provide supportive supervision uh, to the, the, the entire health workforce. Um, the uh, African Union at one time developed what they called African Health Workforce Roadmap. And the strategic areas included strengthening health workforce leadership. I've told you that already. 
strengthening the regulatory capacity. I've told you that already. Scaling up education and training uh, uh, and optimizing the utilization and retention of, of uh, health workers. The situation in many African countries today uh, is that from very acute shortages, very severe shortages, which were described in the joint learning initiative and in the various uh, uh, reports from the WHO, Africa is now a situation in a situation where 10, 20 years later, the densities of health workers have not changed very much. But sadly, or rather, uh, uh, the number of graduates and has increased, has increased significantly. But because of poor governance, you find in many countries, qualified health workers who are not employed. At the same time, they coexist with unfilled vacancies in the health system. And then there is the pressure to migrate because of those frustrations. So governance is extremely important in the way in which we are going to support health workers. And then the training, of course, should be as uh, I have described already. And the, um, the commission, the Lancet Commission on uh, uh, Health Workforce for the 21st century, it encouraged us to uh, have these people who are our trainees become experts, very knowledgeable in their, in their topic, their subjects, uh, professionals who have got values in them and change agents who are uh, leaders uh, in their communities. Um, in the last few years, there are examples of some African countries who have made big interventions and successful interventions too. Uh, at one time, Ghana had a huge crisis with migration, and they still have even today. The BBC has been showing the story of uh, uh, Ghanaian nurses who are going to the UK, leaving big gaps at home. But there was a time, uh, maybe like uh, five, six years ago, Ghana made a big uh, uh, effort and reduced migration. Uh, uh, from 68% to 2%. Ethiopia is another country which made a big effort to scale up education and training, increasing graduates of doctors from just 300 per year to 3,000 per year. The, Rwanda is also another country uh, which uh, has made a, a, a big uh, effort and uh, uh, and uh, we can see the results in their health indices and so on. But we want more of this. We want a, a lot more of this. But to do that, the uh, CUGH and uh, AfriHealth being uh, educational institutions, uh, it really should uh, take the lead in making sure that they are advocating with the political leadership within the professions themselves to get more resources, to getting more people educated, but above all, to also strengthening governance of uh, health workforce systems so that they don't graduate and can't get jobs and are forced to, to, to migrate. Um, The other challenge which we have here, certainly in Africa and many low-income countries, is just the resources available to the countries to employ, which means that the need will be there, but the ability to employ will not be there. We have opportunities going forward presented particularly uh, by COVID, as I see it. The history of classifying health as a consumptive sector by some economists has been shown to be misplaced 
particularly with the recent COVID pandemic. And it is now possible for us to argue more strongly for stronger health systems, for, for, for more health workers. We also had the a, a Commission on Health Employment and Economic Growth, which was uh, commissioned by Ban Ki Moon as Secretary General of the UN, which showed that the health sector in some countries contributes to 30% of the GDP. It is an employer, uh, a source of taxes, and uh, it also, of course, provides the health care that the population needs. And this topic of health workforce has been entered as one of the indicators in the SDGs, which again strengthens our, our ability to make uh, the case for health workers. So I don't want to take very long, but my messages are one, that this is very important. We can't allow it to continue that children die, uh, women die in childbirth, uh, and we say it is God who called them, that really needs to change. And we who are in CUGH, who are in Africa, in uh, AfriHealth, we have a role to play as advocates for this. Then two, the uh, education institutions uh, should be able to produce graduates with the required competencies and advocate for them to get uh, uh, jobs within their communities. And the migration child is going to be with us because uh, it's a given due to global demographics. Uh, the the in, in, in populations in the north uh, are aging. Uh, it's a shortage of younger people, but in the south we have plenty of young people. And the global uh, and the WHO code on international recruitment of health personnel agreed to create a global pool of health workers who are shared through that uh, uh, code. Uh, at one time, uh, there was a, a, a big move by uh, the northern countries to provide resources for scaling up health workforce production in Africa. MEPI, NEPI, Japan uh, also uh, made grants. So did the Scandinavian countries. But this has sort of died away. And we need to get some way of reigniting uh, the global effort to get this movement to make it possible for all health work, uh, for all populations to access competent and supported health workers around the world. We also need global partnerships, such as the one which is we are engaged with now. I think the partnership between CUGH and AfriHealth, if it is used strategically, can be a lever for raising the visibility of this issue and also providing solutions which are needed so much. So I will stop there for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Maso. That was outstanding. And before I turn it over to Dr. Dykins, uh, Dr. Elsikakuli Malawadi, the president of Baffer Health, uh, has joined us. So some technical difficulties. And um, after Dr. Daikin speaks, uh, I'll hand it over to uh, Dr. Kaguli Malawadi to take over uh, and lead. Uh, thank you very much again, Professor Maswa. Uh, Andrew, please over to you. Okay, great. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Kamaswa. Thank you so much for uh, uh, presentation. Um, very, uh, very much um, hits to the point on extraordinarily important um, issues. And I'm very grateful uh, for all that you had to say. Excuse me for a second as I'm having a little bit of, there we go. Okay, so thank you all so much uh, for the opportunity and I am uh, going to be speaking with you today about uh, the capacity strengthening platform 
that is an initiative uh, through the Consortium of Universities for Global Health. We have been collaborating extraordinarily closely with Afro Health from the beginning of this, um, especially with uh, uh, Professor uh, Elsie Kamawadi uh, since um, um, over, over probably six or seven years now, something along those lines. Um, and so this has been an extraordinary effort and a lot of fun, and we have something to share with you today. Um, we have just launched um, earlier this year our phase two of this uh, platform after a pilot phase over the course of a couple of years. Uh, we have made some considerable improvements and we're ex really excited about the opportunity for advancing this and we think that it will, uh, there's a lot, a lot of potential to uh, address many of the things that uh, Professor uh, was discussing. So this is a global matchmaking web platform that facilitates equitable institutional partnerships and mentorship. Uh, to strengthen health uh, workforce training capacity. <clears throat> you can find this at uh, cghcapacitybuilding.org. And um, also there's a QR code on most of the slides in this presentation and at the end. So I would strongly encourage each of you to just go ahead and connect. During the course of this presentation, and I'll be showing you how to utilize this platform. First, I'm going to just go over a couple things with you. This is a small portion of the team that has worked on this platform over the course of many years. Um, I'm eternally grateful for all of those that have contributed to this effort. I would like to provide some funding acknowledgement, uh, initially funded by the Tom Hall Education Committee small grant. Uh, CUGH, and then through the National Institutes of Health, Fogarty International Center in 2022 to help advance this uh, to this current phase. Um, just to summarize uh, a few of the points that Dr. Maswa, Professor Maswa was making, that uh, healthcare workforce is absolutely essential for equitable access to healthcare services, to achieve universal health coverage, and to advance the sustainable development goals. There is a projected shortage of 18 million workers by 2030, and the World Health Organization African uh, region will uh, be by that uh, with the current estimated shortage of about 6.1 million by 2030. 36 of the 47 African countries have a critical shortage of doctors, nurses, and midwives. It's also um, important to understand that uh, the World Health Organization African and Eastern Mediterranean measures basically stagnant, not making a lot of effort, uh, not not a lot of advancement. Uh, and so there's an enormous hill to, cl to climb. And um, the group, um, Afro Health Consortium, um, is extraordinarily well positioned in making considerable strides in advancing this. So we anticipate that we'll see a major change in the coming years. Um, and so we're eternally grateful for the efforts of Afro Health and all of those uh, contributing to this issue. Um, <clears throat> Individuals and institutions can connect and share training resources in order to strengthen clinical and research capacity in low uh, resource settings through this uh, platform that we are telling you about today. It does address a couple challenges of the lack of qualified training, as well as the challenge of connecting existing expertise and established training programs to areas and individuals with identified training capacity gaps. So. There are several partnership principles that this uh, platform hopes to address and to uh, advance. And these would be matchmaking, transparency in capacity priorities to ensure strong uh, priorities at the local instance, as opposed to letting uh, grants and uh, external agencies and organizations drive the partnership and uh, uh, focus. Um, incorporating a strong contextual understanding and incorporating equity, reciprocity, bidirectionality, social justice, and humility within our partnerships. Again, focusing on the local priorities, responsibly distributing partnership benefits, also encouraging partnership uh, locally and long-term partnerships. So let's get into this and see how we can use this. I'm going to go over several slides that just go over the uh, uh, operations of the uh, platform itself. But uh, first, I want to also uh, let you know that within CUGH, uh, they will be offering um, free registration to the upcoming CUGH annual conference uh, in um, 2024. 
there will be winners announced in at the end of September, at the end of October, and at the end of November. In order to be eligible for this, uh, you'll need to sign up for the platform through that link, create a post, either a partnership, mentorship, or training program post, and then register a partnership or mentorship connection. And this functionality is not currently live, but will be coming within the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Um, and I would strongly encourage each of you to take advantage of this and as well um, share this platform with uh, everyone that you know um, so that we can have a lot of people populating the site. We already have a lot that's going on and I'm going to show you a few of those things. So there are several steps involved in the utilization of this site, this registration, creating postings among three areas, the needs and expertise um, for, a train, uh, for a partnership, um, established trainings and mentorship opportunities. You can search among these types of um, opportunities and then connect and then strengthen capacity together. So let's start with registration. <clears throat> um, you can do this through the sign up button after you connect uh, through this site and then fill out a very short uh, form um, that will um, populate your name um, and then you will be um, you will have a profile page that is a little bit dull to begin with but we encourage you to dress that up a little bit so make it look nice and then you have an opportunity down below to edit your profile as listed here where you will provide a little bit more information about who you are and where you're coming from and then you have the opportunity to create postings so you can do that on the dashboard hand side of the posting on the dashboard site area and then you have the opportunity to um, categorize the posting that you are putting in um, you will give it a title and then you go through a series of questions posting or implementation science whichever focus you want to uh, create by the way uh, platform into access to all of the postings through either of these at any point. It's just a way of categorizing things um, uh, so that you can more easily find implementation science, which uh, helps us to advance the capacity building piece. Um, and then select a training program, mentorship, or partnership area, and then providing or seeking training. Um, if you are uh, seeking a partnership, um, then you would place that in that area there. And then you have the opportunity to, if you're doing an implementation science posting, to provide more detail. And this uh, changes depending on what area you have selected for implementation science. You can select frameworks um, and a, a chosen audience, the area, the people that you would like to have trained, public health, medical education experts, medical officers, clinicians, etc. cetera. Um, and then you can make those selections to further categorize your, uh, your posting and then provide some additional context about your training program or about your partnership that you're creating. Um, you don't have to answer any of these, but the more that you do answer provides more information to allow people to search for and identify programs that may uh, interest them. You can then um, have some open word uh, de description of your uh, partnership opportunity or capacity building program or mentorship um, request and then uh, more additional information and then you can provide a web link as well if that should be helpful for you. So if you're focused on a partnership that is not implementation research you would go through the similar process in doing a general posting here and then you can continue along. If you have an interest in a technical or clinical a technical area which includes clinical, non-clinical, or interprofessional areas, then you can um, you can click on that. Choose um, a specific disease uh, category if you would like, um, and then uh, choose a broad category, and then specify uh, through an open word entry of the specific area that your focus is on. If you would like to uh, place a training program, then you would put seeking training program in that area and then provide context and uh, descriptions as uh, opportunities for providing more information. Mentorship, very similar, seeking mentoring there. 
um, and then providing more detail on what areas you would like to be uh, mentored or provide mentorship in could be implementation science or otherwise with additional uh, detail to provide more for those uh, that might be interested. You as well can search all of the existing um, uh, postings through the searching postings on the left or the um, uh, on your dashboard page. Um, here is where the postings, where you can find the postings and you can search um, uh, through filters or a keyword search on top. Um, uh, including uh, countries, so you can find other postings within neighboring countries to encourage more collaboration locally. And then you can also see uh, some postings off to the right uh, um, as you filter your search. So if you're doing an open one search for cervical cancer, then it will bring up uh, particular um, programs that are mentioning cervical cancer as a focus, and then you can identify those um, if you're seeking a training program in implementation science, you would just filter out those areas and then it pulls up um, automatically those uh, particular programs. When you click on a program, it takes you to a detailed page describing what that program is. This is a posting. You can see the type of posting at the top, the title, and then all the information about the posting listed here. These are, this is the contextual information over to the right. Uh, the person that uh, uh, posted this is listed here when it was posted and updated so listed here. Also noting that it expires one year after its last update. Um, you can connect with this individual through a link here and you can save this posting to your area if you want to come back to it. Please also note that we have integrated uh, ways of sharing these postings with others through social media or through a direct email. If you uh, know of someone that this might be interested uh, to, then you can just share this immediately with them. And we strongly encourage you to do that to bring more people into the site. So if you would like to connect with someone who has created a posting, then you just go ahead and, and identify their area down there and just uh, send that request. Um, by clicking on the connect, it turns it to request sent, and then you can click on the save, and it saves it into your area, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. You have a timeline within your profile that uh, where you can communicate with others. You can write something uh, to an individual on that um, area by putting in their, their call uh, name um, and communicate directly with people. Um, on the site. Um, you can communicate without sharing your personal contact information. And then when you feel comfortable that you have decided you would like to partner with someone, then you're welcome to share your personal contact information through the site. But this protects your identity and keeps uh, things private. You can, um, you have saved postings off to the left. Um, when you click on that, it takes you to your own saved postings that you have saved in the past. Um, so you can um, revisit those. As I stated, you can connect with others on the site by connecting through their, the, the name of the individual. Um, this is a person that's seeking a mentoring program. Um, and then you can um, uh, further connect um, with those individuals um, through line by sending messages here. When you click on that, you have the cho choice of uh, sending a public message or uh, a message to members, connections, or uh, something that's visible only to you and the person that you're sending it to. Um, and so then you can create a post and post it um, there, and um, then others can like or comment. So it has a basic social media capability um, to allow for conversations on the site. You can go to others' sites, uh, others' profile pages and and messages directly to them on their own timeline um, and uh, selecting the only me guarantees that uh, they will be the only one um, seeing that post or you can make you would like they can pass it together on the same uh, find your save connecting messages through the messaging pro, uh, 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 functionality here. And then you can also register your impact partnership mentoring or training program. And as I stated, this is coming very soon. You'll give a partnership overview, an annual report including the number of trainees by workforce type and discipline that you're train, training. And then it has an opportunity, uh, uh, opportunity to list citations and other guiding doc documents 
of, uh, of what you are doing. Please reach out and contact us through the site. Um, provide some information to us about your experience. And if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us through that way. Please note that the platform does stay current. It has an automated uh, prompts uh, to all those who create postings. Posts are live for one year from the time of posting, and then it automatically archives. The person who's posted this will receive prompts um, prior to that automatic archiving, and then once it's archived, it goes into an archive section within your uh, profile page. So you can um, access those again, update them, and repost them if you would like. But that keeps it clean for everybody else to make sure that you know that all of those postings out there um, are up to date. Um, and so that's very helpful. Uh, so please visit us at cughcapacitybuilding.org. Don't forget, um, you can win free registration to the CUG. GH annual conference for the 2024 uh, conference in September, October, and November of this year. So please sign up, create a post, and then register as a partnership or mentorship connection. Please stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for your uh, for the opportunity to visit with you today. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you very much, Keith, for, for starting off this webinar. As Keith told you, I had a technical uh, problem, so I wasn't there at the beginning. But uh, this is the beauty of partnerships. We've just experienced uh, that uh, Keith could take over and uh, chair the beginning of this uh, webinar. So the Afri Health CUGH partnership is working very well. Thank you very much for joining this uh, webinar. If you have questions, please put them in the, in the chat or you can put up your hand and we let you speak. I'd like to thank uh, Professor Maswa for his presentation and uh, Andrew, thank you so much for taking us through how we can register for, at that platform. And I'm appealing to members of AfriHealth to use this platform. I think this is a very, is very useful for all of us. And we at uh, at uh, Afri Health, we believe in partnerships, uh, north south, like the Afri Health CUG Working Group Partnership, but also south to south partnership. And so this type of platform is uh, very helpful for us to for getting partners. I, I would like to ask some questions as I wait for others to put their questions in the chat. I would like to ask Professor Maswa, uh, can you please address the importance of partnerships between academia and uh, their governments? How can this help us to strengthen capacity in low and mid-income countries? Uh, thank you, Elsie, uh, and uh, welcome to the meeting. And uh, a very pertinent question. Very, very. This is what everything is about. How can people like us influence our governments so that what we are expecting from the governments for the people is achieved? And uh, it is it, it tricky, you know. You get politicians, a minister, for example, of health or of education, they have a way of uh, viewing us, the so-called academics and university people. There's some suspicion, there are issues of different uh, uh, types, but the best way is to create structures inside the countries where we are part of. Uh, at the Global Workforce Alliance, we recommended something called the uh, CCF, Country Coordination and Facilitation, which is a, a committee inside the country led by the health sector, but in it would be the education sector, would be the, the finance uh, uh, sector, would be professional associations, would be other partners who meet regularly to address health workforce planning in the country. So uh, if many countries can create these committees, 
uh, inside governments, inside countries, where the academia is a, a key part, then we would have an entry point into uh, what uh, you are asking, Elsie, about partnerships. Maybe we can ad advocate for that. There is already a very good document uh, from uh, WHO, Global Workforce Alliance, on how to do it. Uh, and can we get more countries to recognize it, to use it? So that would be my answer to the question. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Maswa. And uh, Andrew, what type of uh, partnerships do you envisage coming out of this uh, matchmaking platform? Thank you so much, uh, Elsie. I really appreciate that question. That um, has, We have designed this uh, platform um, with the input of many uh, individuals across a very broad range of sectors uh, and disciplines um, and audience types or uh, workforce types. And so uh, the types of partnerships that could potentially come out of this platform are very broad and many. Uh, could include medical education, general uh, education for uh, nurses or midwives uh, that uh, would be very easy to register on the site. It could also be something as in-depth as uh, bone marrow transplant uh, 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 collaboration to develop bone marrow transplants uh, centers within countries. So it could be something extraordinarily technical. It involves clinical uh, technical areas as well as research focused areas. So there could be research capacity building partnerships that come out of this platform in implementation research or otherwise. Um, and those could include, and there are categorizations for this, um, advancing knowledge about general research uh, uh, considerations, uh, epidemiology, biostatistics, grant writing, et cetera, um, or uh, uh, partnerships uh, focused on um, research projects themselves, uh, randomized clinical trials, um, and as I mentioned, implementation research, observational trials, et cetera. And all of these things are, uh, there's the ability to categorize these on the site. Um, and so really the opportunities for partnership are very broad. Um, outside of the medical sector as well, I might, I might mention, there are categorized categorizations, for example, um, law. Um, as we know, law has a major impact um, on uh, global health, and so there can be partnerships developed um, in these other sectors that have a direct impact um, as well. So please explore, go on and check it out, and I think you'll find that there are really a lot of opportunities in that area. Thank you very much. Uh, Keith, if you are my co-moderator, but I could ask you a question. We know that uh, our organizations, both AfriHealth and CUGH, depend for, on funding not only from membership, but from uh, funders. So what um, message would you like to give to funders about capacity strengthening or building? Because I know there are some funders on this uh, uh, webinar. Yeah. Thank you, I'll see. One word, opportunity, two words, next word, impact. And I want to draw attention to something that, and, and for, for everybody online, uh, Dr. Malwadi was, as Andrew mentioned, uh, you were instrumental in helping to craft this LC. So thank you for your leadership and being able to guide this, the creation of this, this uh, platform that Andrew mentioned has to work for LMIC colleagues. So if I may, to the funders, uh, Professor Maswa, I'm shamelessly bringing up the book that you helped to write on advice for ministers. And it goes to the question that, that uh, Elsie asked you or about um, the importance of engaging with governments. But in this book, you made a powerful comment, and this is a message to the funders. And you succinctly said that there are significant gaps across government ministries not only health, but also, as Andrew said, in justice, in finance, in public works, in education. And that is, as you said in your book, as a, as a strong ministry, strong health systems, handbook for ministers, you said very clearly that like, there's a big gap in strengthening the ability of, uh, of governments and ministers to have the people 
the financing, the infrastructure to do the job that they're doing. So LZ, to the funders out there, listen to what Professor Amaswa said, read what is in this book, address, work with groups like AfriHealth, engage in strategic fund and support strategic partnerships between institutions in LMIC institute in LMIC countries. So academic institutions in LMIC countries fund those partnerships with governments so they can work together to be able to build and strengthen the development foundation that countries need. And it's missing. It's a colossal missed opportunity. And and I and I would just encourage them to do that. And just finally to say that on the 26th of this week, this week, we had a webinar with uh, Professor Nelson C. One Combo, Professor Harriet uh, Mayanja Kiza, uh, as well as uh, uh, Professor Shimena Garçon from Ecuador um, on LMIC LMIC partnerships, and they'll be online. But for the funders, please work with with please fund AfriHealth, support AfriHealth, invest in AfriHealth, and invest in the strategic partnerships that enable academic institutions and others in LMIC institutions to work with other LMIC institutions to strengthen their development foundation. Uh, thank you, Elsie, for the question. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Keith, that, thank you for really your support to Afri Health, Afri Health. We are we started a bit late and we are run out of time, but I would like to uh, ask uh, Professor Maswa and Andrew just to give us one minute uh, some webinar. Uh, Professor Maswa, please, some last words. Uh, uh, thank you, Elsie. Well, you know, we are on our way through uh, this partnership with the CUGH and these webinars which we are having. I would like to encourage us uh, to press on uh, with uh, this partnership, but not just to end in uh, holding the webinars. There should be follow-up action, concrete follow-up steps that we can take to engage with the, our governments uh, other professional associations and other stakeholders. Uh, it, because it, like I was saying, these uh, women dying and uh, children dying, and you say it is up to God and so on. We are the ones whose job it is to make sure that that line is not supported with solutions. So let's not give up. Do we care? We must care. Uh, we are accountable socially to our populations. We have to be uh, socially accountable to our communities where we uh, where we work. So uh, the message, really, one message uh, I have is: uh, 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 let's not just talk; let's act. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Maswa. Andrew, before we finalize. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> I would just like to summarize by saying that partnerships work. Uh, collaboration is meaningful, and that is what is going to help move us forward. The ability to share, to connect, to engage, to be together, to, to uh, realize others' perspectives and join together to share the resources that we have uh, in meaningful ways is how we advance and how we address this issue. Um, the platform is not perfect, but it is a hopefully a, a, a good step in that direction. Uh, we are continue, continuing to advance this, and we really would like to encourage you to, to join us. Um, please engage with the platform. It, um, uh, provides the opportunity for um, uh, connecting and then share this widely um, through email, through social media, um, uh, through the conferences that you attend. Mention it, discuss it, use it, um, and let's see where this takes us. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. This has been very enlightening to me. I've learned a great deal, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Thank you so much.
Thank you very much, Andrew, for sharing with us uh, about that uh, platform. And I agree, partnerships are the way to go. And if we are to move forward, we, we really need to work together. Keith, would you like to say something before we end? Thank you, Elsie. First, thank you, Elsie, for leading this and bringing us all together and, and working with us on the, on the platform. Just for people, please share the platform, as Andrew mentioned. Uh, to funders, please invest in LMIC, LMIC partnerships. Please attend the Maputo meeting for AfroHealth taking place August 1 to 3. Uh, I think, uh, if I may say, everybody is welcome and we'll be able to come together and do what Professor Maso said we work together to implement. And then to CUGH's uh, conference, which is next March, March 7th to 10th, it'll be a long way away, Los Angeles, but you're all welcome if you can make it. And um, uh, the platform will be open for um, submitting panels uh, in mid-July. We will have free online sessions if you cannot make it, and that'll take place at the end of October of this year. So thank you very much, Elsie, much for allowing us to join you in the, in the webinar. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Maswa, Dr. Martin, and Dr. Dykens. Thank you so much for joining and everybody who has been here thank you for joining this webinar and as professor master has added us let's take action let's use the platform and uh, i would like to add my voice to keith please come for the maputo meeting it's going to be first to third august in maputo mozambique it's going to be an exciting uh, meeting Please be there. Uh, go to our website and uh, but also join and if it's to being a member so that we can work together to improve health. Thank you so much for joining us and happy ED for everybody. Today's ED day in many places or it will be tomorrow so happy day and enjoy the rest of the day bye everyone